from simplicity, Entity's draft does look a little bit easier, mate. Yeah, but <clears throat> Do you agree with Jenkins' assessment that the Wraith King will be their downfall? Yeah, I won't, like, I'm not a really big fan of Wraith King in its entirety. I think it's very good in certain situations, begins. but yeah, this this might be the downfall for sure. Yeah, okay. they might not be picking it again. Well, well, what what would you say? What is it about Wraith King you guys don't like? Um, it's a hero that can get lost in fights pretty easily unless you like win your lane. You start rinsing the jungle with the skeletons, get the early blink armlet deso, and you're dictating the game. Mm. You can fall behind quite quickly and get kited when like BKBs come out and. There's a lot of mess in team fights. Raking just falls flat. I see. Well, Stormstormer is going to be playing the Wind Ranger in the mid lane versus Thugs TA. Uh, not, I mean, Windrunner not the most common pick in general. Uh, what do you think about this mid matchup, though? Oh, this is. Yeah, Windrunner should be able to do pretty fine. I expect. Oh, nice little fight there. Yep. Chaos Ball. This is a try v try to start things out as Spartan. Will he be first blooded again? Taking a lot of damage. Looks like he might be able to just walk away though. As Chrysalis and Katomi. Back to the tier one they go. Are you surprised that they started the try v try? Well, they, they picked this Viper very early in the draft and they have uh, they have very good heroes to take the fight. So for Brame side, not too unexpected. I guess the, the main thing is that they left their Wraith King independent in top lane. It should be pretty okay. Let's, you know, seeing Dire side. The creeps are naturally very close to the Dire Tower. If you block up the hard can prevent the pull. You can play solo, but Brame have to find kills if they're doing this. They're giving Pangalia a free game. They need to shut down this CK if it's to work out. Which is, you know, kind of working out right now. Two CS to the CK. Yeah, and Grim came to assist, so for now, it'll be Brame still with this tri lane versus two, so they really want to win this lane. And we can see just to start things out, Viper uh -uh. is only at four CS, which maybe not the biggest surprise considering how early it is. Okay, they finally abandon the try B3, or try B2, I should say, as Spartan comes to play. Puts down the Bramble, not able to connect onto Katomi. Well, they abandoned this bot lane in a really good position where the small camp's blocked, the hard camp's half killed, and the lane's already pushing into mm. this Viper. So, yeah, really nice setup from Bram to unlock this off lane. And the Beto. Off to a decent start, eight and one. Uh, but, but yeah, back to this mid lane. Ah, Wind yeah. Ranger versus TA. Do you think that one hero has an advantage? I mean, TA is kind of one of those heroes you just go to the jungle at some point and just F off. I mean, I feel, I've said this before, but TA is pretty much one of the... Um, there's going to be some TA specialists out there who might not like this, but it's one of the easiest mid heroes because you just push the lane and farm and exist. Yeah. You don't really get threatened unless in a bad matchup and just get fat. Who would disagree with that? Crystalis gets cogged out. <laughs> taking battery assault damage, 11. Taking some spirit siphon, but it looks like they're gonna be able to find this kill. He gets off the... No, the reality rift is not gonna be enough, so 11 ends up taking out Crystalis. So a good start here for Brame. We'll get the first blood there. And another kill. Fishman inside the cause. Yeah, he's just stuck. Not be able to do too much. Eleven finds the second kill of the game. Double kill. The CK has got four CS. Like this is this is not great. He's gonna, oh, wow. he's gonna lap up maybe two CS on the tower here, but this was horrendous. Lane pushing straight back to the Viper. They got plenty of resources. Still got a mango on the Viper as well. Like, yeah. So thoughts on CK getting off to a bad start because this is a hero that likes to dominate its lane. And now that it's not, what do you do? Yeah, it's recovery is very difficult. Mm. Sure, you can farm up, but... Now we have the Ink Swell. Onto Toby, not going to be able to get a kill off of this, but just a lot of harassment damage each way. Well, the key thing, though, Brain, they're at least doing what they need to do in regards to their heroes, right? They're taking the fight, they're, they're constantly poking down Entity, forcing out the regen, mm -hmm. the resources to come out. And yeah, CK, like we mentioned before, it isn't a hero that likes to recover. It wants to crush its lane, free farm, get that quick, you know, maybe treads corrosion armlet into Echo Saber Blink. And on every single item, you're joining your team for a quick fight. And if you can't join your team in those fights, it hurts so much because you're just awkwardly clubbing down the jungle, which isn't as efficient as other carries. Yep, definitely a hero that wants to uh, fight with his team, uh, which is why I actually like watching him because it's not one of these sit in the jungle, Mm -hmm. Farm up like a Medusa or Arrowblade. Not a spoiler. This might be the game. <laughs> he might be AFK in the jungle to recover. This was a bit of 
But the recovery is going to be very slow in that case. We're going to see the Wraith Fire Blast, but the Shield Crash onto two with the Ink Swell to follow. They're going to focus onto Spartan, it looks like, as Katomi pops the wand, but there's the Shadow Realm. Toby has a Swashbuckle. Might be able to get this kill. And indeed he does. Goes right through him. We get the extra proc of Swash as a result. We'll take a Wraith Fire Blast for his troubles, though. It looks like he'll be able to be just fine here. Tango's actually such a disgusting laner. But you think he's pretty weak, but he's the best hero at punishing a, an out of position support. Mm. I played I played the other day against some uh, mind control pangolin. Yeah, nah, I'm like not on three, mate. In like, in like five minutes of the game, it was so disgusting. You just swash, you get cor like orb of corrosion, you shield crash on top. Especially with this oh. broomstroke pairing. Oh, this will be a really big kill. Nabito trying to focus on Katami, knowing that he's going to die one way or the other. Will not get the trade, though. So Katami, again, the second game in a row, Katami's piling up these kills. Yeah, Last game was on Skyrath Mage. And by piling up, he has one, but... That's a lot. That's more than none. That's, that is that's a lot. Good math there, boss. Thank you. But, oh, you're also describing the one assist. That's true. He's done a lot of damage this game. He's been part of every kill for Entity. 100%. Yeah. Radiant are scattered. Think about it. You can really skew the stats to make them look a lot better, actually. They, they say stats don't lie, but uh, people that read them do. <laughs> so, you can interpret it any way you want. Or well, they're just really bad at reading. Damage dealt. That's right, my boy. Oh, Wraith Fire Blast. Middle tower There's the Bramble attack. to follow. Still has a swash, though. Won't bother. Kill Crash is so good now that it slows. And... We've been talking a lot about the side lanes. This is the uh, the winner in the TA matchup. I think Storm's done a pretty good job at keeping up net worth, but just the, the CS disparity, TA pushing out mid, going towards the jungle. It'll be interesting to see how both those heroes first join their team. They're very greedy style of bids. Like TA needs to go Deso, Dragonlance, Blink potentially. Windrunner, Maelstrom, BKB. A lot of gold required for them to feel comfortable in the game. Do the ink swell again. Toby is going to be able to get this proc off to the Shadow Realm Spartan. Looks like he's going to drop here. Nope. Off the fairy fire, but there's the finishing move from Katami again. There's a first focus fire of the game. Nice kill from Stormstorm, but will they get the collateral? Oh, the reality rift again, saving Stormstormer. Nicely done from Crystalis. Ends up being a really good rotation from Entity. Yeah, banging rotation. Also, you know, hugging the creep wave to tank up a couple of these battery assaults. Yeah, Storm just identifying the fact that this mid TA, she's not going to be able to make these plays. So if he TPs to a side lane, you're not going to get punished from a Storm or a Voice Spirit style hero counterplaying your move. But I look to see this uh, happening a lot more. He'll probably TP to mid, wait for that next TP available, and look to, to hunt the side lanes once again. Now, Fishman, he identifies the fact that they don't really have any jungle invade. Nice little block up. Dog Sora, though, with the trap. Yep. And has a just sentry deal with that pretty quickly is Toby again going on Spartan. Seems to be the focus for them the last two games now. Dyer's top tower. Is That's hard, all right. When like when you're out, of, uh, not out of position, Radiant's but when you're in the lane and your carry's not attack. there, like they, they have so much kill for it. All the corrosion pang glare, it's, it's actually filthy. Yeah. I mean, the fact that they can, especially once they get more levels, they can actually kill him through Shadow Realm. They don't need to target him necessarily. It's going to be some nice rolling thunder roll up action. As you can see, Thug, uh, in comparison to the Windrunner, about 600 net worth discrepancy. Thug off to a very good start. Uh, but like you said, probably won't be participating. I mean, are you surprised that Stormstorm participated so fast? <laughs> a little bit, happy but I'm happy he did. I, uh, it's just a really nice read, and a lot of Windrunner oh. players naturally would do it. Yeah, that's the first ult of the game for Crystalist, oh. and we're going to see Toby's ult using Conjunction. Easy peasy kill onto 11. Really nice TP from Toby there. The old, the classic Viper, right? You you start really well, you get the tri lane, you keep fighting, and then you just slowly bring in heroes. It's been the winner on a TP, he goes back to mid to farm. Now Toby, another core, he TPs in. So they're using their side lane cores really effectively to punish what was a Viper having a you know, near perfect start to the game. Looks like Brain want to try to turn this around in a crystal, still now that 11 is back into the fray. You see the horse he used to try to get off the cogs. No hook shot needed this time. With that battery is off, but they see the TP coming in. So you can see Viper actually just dodging this fight completely now. There's a focus fire. A nice juking from Desire inside the trees. Get the vision. Inkswell. They actually want to go on to 11 instead. Looks like the clockwork will be cleaned up no matter what. 
I lose that arrow. All these rotations forced and only a support kill. That's the innate tanking is coming into play now. In frame, they're going to be feeling it. Next time they make a move, it. All right, if we jump CK, how are we going to kill him right now? They look to their Willow. Yeah. She says no. They look to the clock. He says no. I mean, is it good news based on how CK started this game? Crystalis is not that far behind a Wraith King. It's 400 gold, but it could be so much worse, I feel like. No, it could have been an absolute disaster if they had an extra little bit of uh, fight in them. But we mentioned earlier, the Wind on a TP, the Pangler TP, these, these two big kills on Viper, it allowed the CK to recover. And of course, I think what the lap upper, he got three assists from all of that. So not doing too shabby on the old CK. They're not going for the over corrosion. He's, the lane wasn't good enough for that. Just going for the old tread soul ring into straightaway armlet. But it's likely a shard after that to keep the farm going. Sadly, Katami here does not have 100% kill participation anymore. Very sad to see. His team grew Only him. five yeah. of eight. Only five. His sky was a lot better. <laughs> nah, he's, he's been a, a stand up player in the DPT. Uh, is he gonna hit him though? Or the Viper, he uses the piggy pole. And he's gonna be taken out very quickly. Swap over, but the Wands guy can keep alive. He's gonna use the Viper Strike as well, but you can see the Spirit Siphon from Fishman ends up resulting in a double kill on the support DP. Another Siphon. He's gonna get slow, and the Vito is with that shield crash. It's gonna be the first life for the Wraith King. And just getting more DPs potentially coming in. There's a Soulbind onto two. The Shackle Shot is there as well. Double kill for Stormstar. They are cleaning things up. Easy fight for Entity. And it's gonna be a full team wipe, but they only lose support DP. Triple kill for Stormstar. Stormer. What a freaking fight from Entity. That is a 11 minute team wipe based on the fact it's a position 5 death profit, 4 point siphon, healing up through all of the damage. We're going to see a, a replay here. You get the quick pick on Viper again, identifying what does Brame need to play around to win this game. It's the early game dominance of Viper. They kill him now three, four times in a row. And look at this DP, OS Rock Hero. One siphon, two siphon, if not more. Yeah. That is actually sickening. And TA is on the edge. Like, Guys, I can help. I can help. No, no, you can't help. You're just going to die instead. Nice shackle connecting on two and utilizing their early timings and just completely slaughtering Brame. This is. This is rough. They did find the one kill. The hardest hero to kill, apparently. The position five death profit. <laughs> but still not a good trade. Five for one. Or so I'm told. Uh, 1k lead for Entity now. Not anything to write home about as of yet. Uh, but we'll see how well they can use this net worth advantage to try to snowball a bit. I mean, TA still top net worth despite that death. Uh, CK is ahead of Wraith King now. That's kind of a big story based on how badly the game started for him. Yeah, Four the bounty, what the hell? Four bounty rooms? Every, all the fights been happening bottom. <laughs> They've just been killing Viper so many times. Wow. I don't think I've seen four in a pro game though. I've seen like two, maybe three, but four at minute 12, that is some some ignorance towards jungling. <laughs> yeah, that's what the heck. Goodness gracious. Uh, Eleven now has his Dragon Lance, gonna be working on the BKB. Zaya working on the Spirit Vessel. Uh, we can see Nabito has the armlet, obviously. Still quite a ways away from his blink though. And on the other side, CK, we've seen the armlet. Looks like it will be shard, actually, mm -hmm. as the... I mean, typically a better farm, you're able to get like this Echo Saber before the shard, but... Uh, Dyer's top yeah, if he had a better lane, attack. probably would have just been armlet Echo. Yeah. But because it's a bit more difficult, you get the armlet, you get the shard, you just throw the, a Chaos Bolt onto a cream. it will clear the wave, you get to walk off and be a little bit more efficient in the, in the fight. Toby. Actually going to use his ult, looking for 11 in the tree line, and they're going to find him. He doesn't get the initial stun, but see the shackle shot is there. Balance on top of it, and it's going to be an easy one onto 11. Does get the Viper Strike off, but really to no avail. I just feel so bad for, for 11. This has just been such a rough game. He had the beautiful start, it felt amazing. He was punishing the CK, but under the cover of Radiant Vision. Just non-stop being ganked by both Pango and the Wind Runner. Yeah. I mean, right now, Thug, it feels like Thug is the one that's keeping Brame alive. It's 14 to 4. Yeah, the network only down 1,000 yeah. because TA is doing really well. The oh, two. Oh, by the cards. Three, in fact. <laughs> I can count. That is a lot of heroes and too many for the clockwork to handle. Desire ends up dropping. And again, the lead expands. 
or entity. Yeah. The fact that this net worth is so close, it is the tier up top. And you know, once again, the, the supports from Entity, there's just a thousand gold ahead of, Dyer's if not maybe two thousand ahead of Brame, it is. Whew. It's rough when supports have this good of a start. It just feels so much worse in these earlier fights. I mean, how would you nerf DP? Because Jenkins was saying that, and I'm pretty sure everybody agreed with them, that DP is, in, in terms of like the positions, five is the most valuable because you get the most out of her when you don't need that much farm necessarily. I think the nerf is simply about the siphon, his name. And I'm not mentioning it. Sack, sir. See, I did it there. Sasha's like, so easy. To me, it's Now, not. when you're casting Soksha. Oh, God, God, I don't know how that is. My Sobi, Ink Cloud. And like I said, they can take him out in that Shadow Realm. Not really going to save you this time, Spartan. And the lead expands even more. Visage or Visage? Visage. Okay. I think both are probably correct, though. Oh yeah, I did a draft panel the other day where I literally jumped between both for about 30 different times. <laughs> Visage sounds very pretentious though. Yeah, so Visage so, coming in. absolutely hate the hero, I'm fine with you saying Visage. Okay. But it is melee. Luckily it's not in the game. Yeah, it's melee. <laughs> uh, I think SVG also says melee, which he's American, so there's no excuse for that one. You might have... I'm, I'm googling it right now. All right. <laughs> I can't be dealing with it. Right. In the US, for sure it's melee. I can't speak for the Brits. Me All right. Radiance bottom tower. There's no water tower. <laughs> yeah, we'll check it out later. As the exorcism pop from Fishman and this tower's gonna go down really fast Dyer's despite it being only a level one ult right now. Fortification Dyer's popped. I'm not sure if they actually want to defend this though. The Bramble's there for Spartan. Trying to force them out. This Chrysalis TP's out in the other lane. And you can see <laughs> Death Robin just in the trees. But the Dyer's deny does come out from Spartan, so nicely done down. for him. Of course, we've seen throughout the series, he is not scared of dying. The great chase. In fact, he welcomes it. Spartan will escape death's grip this time, though. And they're going to smoke up, knowing that the Rolling Thunder is down and the Exorcism as well. So this is a potential opening for Brame. Yeah, they, they need to look for something. If they keep this kind of game plan going, and see, will just move from objective to objective. During that mid siege, Viper hugging the tree line bottom, scared to even show when they saw three to four heroes mid. It is a difficult window in the game right now for Brame. And maybe it's, it's very far up. Look. Yeah, the shackle into the focus fiber. Here comes the rest of Brame covered in smoke. Shield crash is going to be enough to get out that first life. See the terrorize come out. Hook shot to follow, though. Phantoms a brace onto a couple heroes with that soul bind. Toby somehow living through this. Finally dropped, but it's going to cost three from Brame. So despite them being in the cover of darkness, it felt like they were baiting the Wraith King there. And ends up not working out in their favor. They're hunched that they were trying to bait the Wraith King there. The speed in which they moved over. Actually, so just go back to the Roshan. I just wish maybe the TA was available in that smoke, but... Did they get a 3 beat? Nice little 3 beat. Nice juicy kill for him as Crystalis and company will work on the Roshan. So... Half HP, they're gonna pop the drums. And I don't think they can get here in time. There's no hook shot to close the gap. They do have the Bramble to make this even more annoying. And the race team's going to be up in five seconds. Oh, right. The Bedlam used on Fishman. I mean, Roche is really low. I'm a little bit surprised they didn't actually go in there and finish it as Thug. I mean, he can take this relatively fast himself. Of course, they had a trap in there the whole time. They have Rolling Thunder available. Yep, and they're going to use it into the pit. They go, but the Cogs blocks him out. Nicely done. Oven pops the BKB, focusing on this support DP. They'll find her. And the Roshan is going to go to Brame. Okay. Wow. That was a little bit topsy-turvy from Entity there. Like, the quick pickoffs, I think they just respected the Willow and the Clock a bit too much. Even though they didn't have the key Roshan spells, be it the Fear, be it the hook shot. They just, yeah, they just gave a bit too much respect in it. So Brame just walk on in. All right, good stuff from Brame and this And BA. they have the net worth lead. <laughs> Despite being at a major kill deficit, like not even remotely close. 51% says Gaben. Yeah, I mean, that, this was going to be the oh, Aegis that would have, you know, skyrocketed Entity into the game. But look at the items now. BKB on the Thug. Brave King about to complete... He's actually step. rushing the BKB as well. And same with Viper, BKB complete. Like, they're going to have a triple BKB timing, which will be able to brush off the Rolling Thunder and allow them to actually get some right clicks off. Mm. It's now on them. Can they set up that engagement? Can they lock down the winner on a pre-win run? Can they get the CK in a vulnerable position where he isn't just ripping through them themselves? 
But they've given themselves a platform. When down by 12 kills, to actually take the fight. Like, the kill score doesn't reflect the position we're in the game right now. Yeah, you have to give them credit. Uh, obviously, we can Dyer's see the net worth discrepancy. They can't, but they felt Radiant's confident enough to take that fight. Of course, Roche was set up for them quite nicely. <laughs> yeah, it was handed on a silver platter for sure. And uh, obviously, the TA traps serving a big, big role in that engagement. STA now top net worth in the game. BKB's picked up by the Wind Ranger. Also, TA. Next item in the inventory is looking at a, uh, in the quick buy, sorry, is the MKB. Okay. When you're going to commit into the fight, just blink on top, meld strike, put the Wind Ranger to half HP. Most likely you'll see like a Daedalus after this, just all in on that one big, one big crit. The yeah, thing also has that queued up as well. Yeah, they're. they're Dyer, they don't really care about raking it seems. They're like, no, not raking the seeker. They're like, ah, whatever. He's he's not really having a great game right now. They're just respecting the fact this wind runner. Well, it's funny you said. I mean, I feel like he's not having that great good, great of a game either. But he's second net worth. <laughs> yeah, no. I said after yeah, I said it, I was like, I mean, he's, he, he just had, hasn't had a, a big impact yet. He, exactly. Like he's having a he's having a good game. Once he gets one more kill, we can convert that into great. But okay, his team's one and been one doing all the work. Yeah, yeah. That's all you need. There's a positive. I mean, that's not. Is that considered positive? If it's even. I think it needs to be above 500. Again, to be above. factor in the assists, we can be super PMA here. True. Three assists. But Three assists it, equates to how many kills? <laughs> like half? Yeah, 1. So five? yeah like, yeah, okay. 1.5. Sounds good to me. But uh, yeah, this CK right now, it's been the... The fact that he's had zero contribution in, like, the, the big fights... Yeah. That, is it something Frame has to be careful for? Sure, they just got the Aegis, but they've been playing pretty much 45 the entire game. When CK does join in with this armlet, the BKB, and then of course, this is oh, he's not disassembling actually. This armlet echo BKB, it's gonna feel so much worse for Brame. Yeah, and like you said, this uh, BKB timing for Brame is now there. All right, triple BKB is ready. Yeah, Force off and Willow, yeah. CK is quite a ways away from his, so you can tell that Entity probably do not want to really fight. As we see a smoke from Entity, so maybe they do. 3k lead now for Brame though, in just the last couple minutes, thanks to this Age of Steel. Both teams are smoking around their own vision. They want to try and play into a high ground area. We mentioned the importance of initiation for both of these teams, more for Brame. The good thing here for Entity, if you look at the minimap, they have this bottom Radiant Ward, so when the smoke did fade, they were able to see Rain being in that position, so just parking up the top side of the map. Yeah, Brain are all separated by a long ways here. Yeah, Brain might just force them back to base here. Yeah. In this awkward position in the game where you, you don't catch on smoke, the best way to force your team it's just to hit an objective, and then Entity has to go, wait guys, we need to stop this from happening. Yep, As they slowly start TPing in. Just swash it out, and Dyer's Tier 2 tower is down. Desire looking to potentially cancel TPs here. CK? Phantom embraces oh, there, okay, he does. He got hit. Did he cancel the TP? And they're gonna find the Dark Willow as well. As you can see, the Soulbind come out onto two. And Entity get away with murder, it looks like. Didn't cancel the TP, yeah, unfortunately. So he just died. <laughs> he, just died. He, just, yeah, he just went in, did, yeah. cogs the CK, and then he was like, I've got three illusions around there, buddy. Bam! Get out of my game. So you so, can see what Brain was trying to achieve there, right? Force them to bot, quickly TP top, get that numbers disadvantage, and uh, go for the fight. But ah, Fishman is dead. He has a bloodstone. Wait, is that a bloodstone? What was that? Are you okay? He's got an icon above his head. Oh, well, no, I was looking at you casting. Huh? I was admiring you casting for a oh, second. Yeah, stop looking at me. Oh, sorry. Thank you. I mean, he drummed, he used Siphon. Mm. That was about it. Radiant I'll see it again, scanning. don't worry. We'll, we'll, we'll get a replay, I'm sure. <laughs> it was a really important kill. <laughs> no, we don't want that. Oh, it's coming. No, it won't. Oh, oh here, here we are. It's a, it's, a, it's a high five. Oh, is it the minus armor from it's the It's a shark, break. Maybe? Oh, for the, oh, it is the break. Yeah. It kind of looks like the Bloodstone. I'll just say it looks like it. They get a I, nice high five off, though. I was very confused. Bloodstone on a position five death prop. Whoa! Oh, jeez. That was some hype for you. Man, these cosmetics are really getting out of hand, Tika. They're starting to change the particle effects. Uh, Not really. I still think the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, production. 
Making me look stupid again. All right, did you see the Reddit clip the other day where Gorg legit thought that he was playing Crystal Zeus Maiden. and he thought yeah. he was the CM? <laughs> yeah. I've good. never seen someone do that before. It was... It's only a matter of time. Oh, God. All right, we have a five hero smoke from Brame. 2K lead now. Despite being the score is not close, it's so funny. But there's a BKB now for the CK. But MKB on TA. Winona has to be careful. She can't play with yeah, the confidence true. that she's had. Trying to find an opening is Thug. Has the haste rune as well. Entities seem to have a Dyer's decent idea that they're in attack. the area. Barton. Ramble not going to connect. Now they've given away their position. So, Rame not able to find an opening. And Roche. We won't know for another minute how long that spawn's gonna be. I think Entity's doing a really good job at just keeping this top lane pushed out. It's forcing Brame to be uncomfortable, where if they're not pushing this top lane back out themselves, Entity knows, guys, they're in our bottom jungle. Let's not push this wave too aggressively, let's play defensive. So, Brame, if they want to play this style of Dota, which is looking for that big fight, they need to get all their lanes equally pushed out. Because right now, they're just the macro play from Entity is just completely removing this triple BKB timing that we, we had seen. They also had an Aegis, which never really took into effect. Yep, they definitely didn't get much out of that. As CK is going to initiate on the Wraith, and that's the first life instantly taken out. Spartan with a nice terrorize, though, onto several heroes. BKB not quite yet on the CK. Going to try to focus on the Wraith. He's just pounding away onto CK. He's just going to get the kill. Very easily done. You can see the Winteranger died as well. As Toby stuck inside the cause, gets off a swash, but not to much avail. Three for one. Rame winning this fight handily as Fishman looks to be next. Triple kill for Thug. And only the Grimstroke remains. And the start of that entire fight, Thug just found the winner and a running into the engagement and just solo killed him. Just melt strike into a second hit. So you see here, this is initiation, blows up the Wraith King, gives Entity the kind of full hope. Guys, we can make it, but a beautiful fear from Spartan. Yeah. And look at the meme map right now, in the bottom tail in this fight, you're about to see winner on this up here. That was just TA, 1v1. CK just off. didn't pop the BKB the entire fight. Yeah. That was unfortunate. It, it was rough, and Wraith King going to half HP just didn't have that extra little bit of something, but yeah. primarily because this winner on it wasn't able to get into the fight. No, yeah, Brain. They've done an incredible job at itemizing correctly to get into this game. Like we had doubts about this Wraith King, but this is what Wraith King wants in a game, where he isn't the primary source of damage, right? He's soaking up the fight, he himself can have kill threat, but his team are the ones really converting when it matters. Yeah, this TA, about to hit 20k net worth. Yeah, and this lead has ballooned for Brame. As we can see now, Roshan will respond in 20 seconds. How quickly went from 50-50 to like 83% chance of Brain winning. That yeah. was a span of not even 10 minutes. I mean, Brain has done a really good job with their, their timings. 100%. Getting these items like in conjunction with each other, then smoking and getting actual successful kills. Whereas Entity, I mean, they got that BKB, but they just literally didn't use it. Brain looking primed to potentially take game number two, which would force uh, three games, which is how a best of three does work. That is how it works. Wondering. But then uh, and the third game of a best of three becomes a best of one. That's right. And then in the best of one, if you lose, you're at div one. That's right. And you have to div two. That is exactly right. Thank you. You know, there's some people that get triggered when you say, now it's a best of one. I love that. I like it though. Yeah, I, oh, I love it. Yeah. I don't know why people get triggered by that. All right, we got a smoke from Brame. TA, locked and ready. She is enormous. Has the arcane rune bottled. Level 25 as well. Oh, wow. So many refraction charges here through. Damn. 13 charges. Yeah, that is pretty disgusting. Here we can see Nabito is only a thousand away, basically, from finishing the ace oh, completely. Toby. Toby, no. Tried for the pit, but sees that nobody's there. and says he's going to run right into them on his triangle. Gets off one stun. Now that that's on cooldown, see if Entity even want to fight anymore. Yeah, they think that Roche is being attempted, but it is definitely now being attempted. <laughs> yeah, and this is the vision advantage from Brain. Like, they have the traps in the pit, the clockwork flaring, Entity to check the pit. Yeah, and they, they have that rolling thunder, thunder down yeah. as well. Big spell down. Roche getting quite low. Exorcism is popped. Another move with a Phantasm. We're going to focus on the Viper. It's going to be... Oh, beautiful! Terrorize to save him temporarily. 
third, but the swashbuckle will be enough to take out Eleven as the Beto getting forced on by Crystalis. He pops that BKB, but not going to do much for the racing for that first life. But now they're going to focus all of their efforts onto him, and they're going to be successful in killing him. It's a fight back under clockwork. Roshan is being taken out. Who gets the agent? It will be Crystalis. What a fight from Entity, despite not having Rolling Thunder. Braim forced it, they lose four, buy back on Clockwork, and lose this fight horribly. Oh, that is, positioning is key for Braim, and unfortunately at the pit, you look outside there, there's a Radiant Ward on the high ground, so Braim is pretty much playing into uh, their own vision, and that is why they struggled. Just look at this, they perfectly play on the left-hand side, Braim playing into the fog, but look at 11, he, under that ward, he instantly gets jumped, he didn't have time to get BKB off, and at this point, they're in the retreat. Fun. They're going to run away. They're so, the soul binded on the top, raking out of position. So, yeah, this was Vision winning the fight for Entity there. You don't need running Thunder if you just have the, have the initiation. Beautiful stuff. At the very least, Thug survived. That is true. He didn't really fight too much. <laughs> <laughs> he did watch. He, he enjoyed a bit from afar. <sighs> like Wraith King, you don't have enough farm, bro. Not yet. He's buying the AC. He's like looking at Thug like, yo, bro, can you carry me, bro? I'll buy the AC. Easy peasy. Still 700 away now for him. So yeah, Aegis, uh, was that the shard Roche? Was that the second Roche? I think it was, right? Yeah. But who got it? Uh, Might have been Grimstroke. I'm, I'm leaning Grim. Oh, I'm Grimstroke leaning Grim. shard is yeah. kind of filthy. It's very good. You have good talents as well for it. Spell Amp, Inkstore cooldown, the fact that you have some life still. Yeah. Very, very nice. Well, Pangolier has one already. I'm assuming that he bought it. And what, Death Prophet has one Death too. Death Prophet has one as well, yeah. So I'm not sure who picked it you up. You know what? Barely. I'm gonna go left field and say DP actually picked it up. Okay. I wasn't paying attention to that specific thing, I won't lie. Probably should have been. So extra charge of Spirit Siphon and the Fear Effect. Very good. It allows DP to feel like a hero when you don't have access. The fact that you have Drum, Ghost Step to get into the fight, providing a stun, very critical. And uh, potentially could yeah, all of them feared. If she only has one charge left, you know what that means. It's time for Boots of Bearing. Uh, get the bongos out. Let's go. Wait, can you even buy drums again? Does that work still? Like refreshing? Or do you uh, need Boots of Bearing? I don't think you can. It doesn't I say in the patch should. notes that it changed, so... I assume you should be able to. I know you yeah. used to be able to, but that would be a very Dota thing if it just got removed. They incentivized the Boots of Bearing. It's not in the patch notes? Yeah, yeah. Like, how many people realistically bought another recipe to refresh your drum charge. Very rare. I, Very I would guarantee rare. most players playing Dota never knew that was a thing. All right, Shadow Realm, gonna dodge Chaos Strike. I able to get the outpost though. And as you can see, the Reality Rift piercing spell immune. I, was that not in the last fight? I could have sworn he used it on Wraith King uh, while beat already. No, he, he didn't. He was level 19 in that fight. Okay. So it was the element of surprise that allowed the see. Very good it. talent though. Extremely good. Anything that like pierces BKB and repositions is OP in Dodo, in my opinion. Oh, Rolling Thunder. They really want this outpost. It's not going to happen, though, Spartan. First to down from 100 to 0. It cost the Rolling Thunder, though. As you can see, Thug in the area with his Wraith getting to pop the drums. That's the last charge of the drums. But there's the hook shot to counteract it. Inkswell is there. He's going to heal up a bit. And gets the Spirit Siphon off as well. A bit, you can he's see really that HP. <laughs> he's fine now. <laughs> TA able to walk away. I will say, I know this game's a bit even, but Spartan is one of the support players where when he dies a lot, he still has incredible impact and good items. Hmm. Like, he could easily could only have a four stop in this game. But... Yeah, Spartan, I love this guy because you know that he is super hyped. Like, you yep. can just imagine what the comms are like, right? And you know the, the tomato and the potato have death throws? I feel like yeah, Spartan small. has something similar inside of him. Oh, he unlocks them for sure. Like right. when he dies in the game, just more awareness in the game suddenly. He doesn't right. have to control the hero. <laughs> 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 this was from uh, the previous game where he was uh, amuleted, shadow amulet in the, the pit, and then killed shortly after. I, I, again, you can see Spartan, he has a, a keen eye for the Aegis. It was a, a massive steal when he played Clockwork during DPC, which allowed his team to come back into the game and find a win. He went for the Amulet play in game one. He tried four staffing in on Willow to get it in game two. Like, you gotta respect him. I mean, he this, really wants to get a snap. The personality, this is the type of personality everybody would want on their team. 
Very positive, very enthusiastic, gets you pumped up. Big fan of Spartan. Dies in aggressive positions. Yep, he's died ten times this game. All right, can we, can we pull up the wet where he died, though? Let's just oh. reset. Oh, oh, oh Link Thunder. That's number 11. Let's make sure this was on the picture. <laughs> but, uh, my assumption... Everything. They are rather... <laughs> <laughs> Everything. He's died everywhere. No, but I mean, like... Look, Even look, distribution look how, in their base. Look how deep these deaths are, though. I'm not trying to, like, find reasoning in nothing, but you, it, he's just annoying. Like, he's just dying in places right. where... Makes like, he's a bit died so much that they question whether it's worth killing exactly. him. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> again, and the stomp, that gave it away. Uh, it is then when he knew that he truly Dyer's effed up. Not yet. Mad respect to Spartan oh. and his players, though. Aegis is gone, by the way, and you can see that Brame has timed that out. They have smoked immediately, but they're not going to find anything off the backside here. Oh, he does have a nullifier onto Thug. So that's going to be a Ghost Scepter removal for the DP. That's going to be... What else does it dispel? The Windrun? Windrun. Um, and to be very clear, lads, you can nullify through the BKB. So if Windrunner comes into the engagement of BKB, so you nullify her, she can't Windrun out. On top of the MKB. Yeah. Uh -oh. Before, when I used to have... to injury. It's terrible. She used to have talents which were undispellable Windrun, which in my opinion was... Giga broken, but now that's not there anymore. What was it replaced with? Some slightly worse talent. I think it was uh, probably it was her level 20 talent, so damage reduction or shackle duration. That 25 talent, the cool, it reduces the cooldown by 20 if you get a kill. That's a 10 second cooldown. Pretty disgusting. Yeah, that's nice. If you can actually get it to work. I'm Ninety like percent win rate, really. At level twenty-five, I hope you're getting the kill at that point. You know, yeah. like if you're not getting killed with your ultimate, then you probably optimized a bit poorly. That is a sick win rate, though, Toby. Using that shard to get away, and obviously having that ink swell is with that shard is just so nice to just—it's it's kind of a safety net, knowing you're going to get dispelled. So much extra heal. Toby's oh, like his items up. Oh. 100% win rate. How often do you see level 25 win rate? Wow. Sorry to, to ruin your stat. 100%. Just... Wow. <laughs> Toby is Viper struck. Uh, he's going to run it off now. Again. Yeah, Toby, he's going for a very support style of build here with his Pangolier. 69? What is the cost? It's actually a very even win rate between the two talents, funnily enough. Both oh, are really good. And you're trading off between or the replenishing or damage, right? You're either sustaining or ending the game. So yeah, I think both are absolutely banging 25 talents. Radiance top tower is under attack. You know, Perian was using the term belter a lot. Oh yeah, so that's a, oh, I've not used that in a long time. It sounds aggressive, but apparently it's yeah. a positive. No, yeah, belter. Right. I was gonna say that was a real belter. Okay. Basketball, you know when a, when, a, when you do like the hardcore shot, the buzzer beater. Yeah, sure. Radiant that was a belter of a shot, mate. You know, that was a belter of yeah, a shot. Yeah. Okay. Do you know the, where that comes from, though? Um, no, and it probably has a, a tainted history, and I'll probably find <laughs> out about it after this. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Oh, most things go. Oh, Wind Ranger is dead. Nice <laughs> jump from Brame. Pretty value kill. Does have buyback uh, as Roshan. It's actually spawning now. Very good timing for Brame if they're able to actually scout this out. Toby with the ink swell applied, uses the rolling thunder in conjunction with his shard. That's gonna be an easy kill on the Spartan to start things out. Of course, they are without a core in their Windrunner. A second nullifier, holy jeez. And Aghanim Scepter is on Roshan, so. Ooh. Get into the it is a dirty one. Spartan's gonna buy back Toby with the swashbuckle. Remember, Wind Ranger, there's the buyback. Was expecting that, knowing that Roche is relatively known, low now. Is the Beto getting gone on? That's gonna be the first life to start things out. Wind Ranger getting there with that win run. The Beto pops that BKB. He's just killing the illusions from CK. Soulbind onto two with the Phantom's Embrace to follow. Terrorize. We'll catch a couple heroes, but the BKBs will be, be very good at mitigating it. Focusing on the Viper now. Looks like the Pango will die. Buyback into the game. Wraith King finally is going to go down for the second time this fight. No buyback for him. Clockwork's dead as well. Somehow, Entity is winning this fight. 
They finally get rid of the traps in the pit. This is a really important Roche. Aghanim Scepter is that's basically 4.2k in your pocket. And they're gonna have to give it up. So Entity with a huge team fight win. Aegis, Cheese, Aghanim Scepter, which CK. Ah. Oh, he gave it up. You gotta give it to Windrunner. Windrunner. Okay. That's where the Undispellable comes into play. You buy the Ags, it's not a talent anymore. Hmm. Luckily, I was able to get this third Aegis. I think if she didn't get that. This game would have been so difficult, but now... You're still going against... MK... Two MKBs. Yeah, but I think this double nullified pickup from Brain where they're trying to be like, ha we gotcha. Wasted gold, kind Com of. Now it's wasted economy. It feels... Other than for DP, who's going to feel real sad. <laughs> oh, no, that <laughs> only five, yeah. Huh? Yeah, I think... Yeah, this was... I was worried for Winona having a game. You see, from her quick buy, she needed some damage. She never was thinking about this Agonims, but... Yeah, no. I got gifted a freebie here. Storm's gonna be very re relieved. They got that would be a nice little post. Grim Axe would have been pretty free. Oh, he's going for it already. So halfway there actually. So getting that dark portrait on Wraith King is actually disgusting. I also would have argued like Tangelier as well could have been a great option, but his build is super utility in this game. The Lotus, the Greed, yeah. trying to remove silences and roots. Yeah, getting Ags on Tango feels pretty bad when you don't have that 15 talent. Yeah, you need to have you need Basher, you need this, you need to have but yeah, once they get this dark portrait, you have AC on your team. <laughs> you just got a free AC. That's a good point. And it's a magic immune unit. Yeah, you're going to be able to. I think the, the saving grace, at least, is this is going to be a dark portrait that might not have the easiest time locking onto a hero, other than the Wraith King himself, which you would then argue Wraith King could do well. Like killing a Willow, she can realm. Clock has the. Uh, the cogs. But they have to worry about so many illusions, right? CK That's illusions on top of the Dark Portrait, and the Dark Portrait, even if it just stands there, these fights and AC is nice. It's why TA struggled to play in these big team fights, right? You pop everything, and TA just runs away. Right. Frames done well when they're finding the pickoffs. Rolling Thunder used very early. Spartan tanking Ooh. the gank, potentially. Oh, they find the TA! The focus fighter's there! Goldmine to follow, and TA's getting bursted from 100 to 0. Does have buyback, though. Too dead for Brain. They're trying to get back into their base. Entity will not allow that to happen. Brain King dies once, and the second death will be very easy. Double kill for Crystalis. Extra system still up, but no creeps to take any buildings. So stop into the TP and submit to get the wave back, but... Oh, but no buyback on Wraith King, so they, they have plenty of time here. He's not remotely close to getting buyback, in fact. <laughs> he bought the nullifier, of course. He's... Yeah. He's struggling a little bit economy-wise, but yeah, Brain. The game was so close because even though they're, they're so far behind on kills, they were finding the perfect setups, and that one time that entity get a, a clean smoke, it just ripped through them. And these final fights have just been super hard for Brain to execute at the Roshan. They didn't have the best vision. In here, they're getting surprised by the smoke. It's strategically, Entity have just pulled a, a, you know, a head coming into this late game. That's yeah, definitely looking good for Entity now. So much back and forth in this series. There's Chrysalis. Just gonna focus on the buildings. Rolling Thunder will hit Spartan, but not gonna be any follow up, I don't think, as Chrysalis was ink swell. Where did the, are the backdoor protections still there, though? The creeps, nowhere near. They got killed off. So. Wasting a lot of time with the Phantasm. They should be able to get the tower at the very least, as the creeps are still not there. Fortification, buying more time. Very slow creep wave. <laughs> this is buying so much time. I mean, King doesn't have buyback, but it's not really going to matter. They get, they're going to get one rax. But they could have gotten so much more if they had creeps. We'll see how disciplined they want to play. Again, both teams want to win this series. I mean, that goes without saying, but this is extremely important. Loser goes to Div 2. Yeah, Loser goes to Div 2 and have zero access to that third most important major again. Don't forget that the DPC points in each tour. They can buy a up. ticket. They yeah, can go in yeah, person. Just to spectate. Well, you need to have a bit more money from the DPC to afford that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, that's a good point. Good counterpoint. Aghanim Scepter now online for Kataomi. So we got that dark portrait ready to go. Expect that to be on Wraith King every single time. It's going to be a fast illusion. Does more damage than Wraith King. Has yeah. that AC and it's magic immune. Oh, the focus fire with that setup. Shackle shot. Oh my goodness. Crystalis is dead again. Well, the table have turned. Winner on her. Indeed. Does have buyback, but Spartan will die again. 
Dyer's top Actually, there's nothing something stopping them now. It, indeed, finally got the lead back again. It was an 83% chance that Brain was going to win this. Oh, there it is. Aegis is gone now, though. Was under attack. Yeah, we got the reality rift into the phantasm. TA is going to have to buy back. That's one death for Raid King. You see the Soulbind onto two, and TA right clicking from afar, trying to take out Stormstormer. They have to nullify. This is going to be enough now that he doesn't have Aegis. Three buybacks, though, for Brave to try to defend this Rax. Focusing on Chris Lift, who has a double kill to start. Back into the fray, onto TA. This will be a dieback, but gets off that refresh at the last moment. But Death Prophet's in the vicinity, and that is going to lead to a triple kill for Chrysalis. Four dead for Brame, and that should do it, ladies and gentlemen. Entity will take this two to zero, and they will stay in Div 1, and sadly for Brame, Div 2 next season. Viper will die. Farewell, Viper. And that's officially a team wipe. Not calling GG quite yet, but yeah, they can just go for throne. Really well played. I mean, this was extremely back and forth. Mm -hmm. yep. it, will come it is sloppy a bit. Like, sometimes overextension into the pit when they don't really have good control from both respective teams in both games, really.